All right, well, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. We're going to jump into this tonight. Father, we just thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge of your word will flow freely from heaven, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. None of me, all of you. Holy Spirit, speak to my vocal cords, think to my mind to minister the word of God with simplicity and understanding. We do covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration that we would demonstrate the word of God. We would demonstrate the life and the nature of God. Now, Holy Spirit, thank you that you confirm this word with signs following and that I have the tongue of the pen of a ready writer to document on the hearts of your people those things that thus say of the Lord. So Father, thank you that even as Jesus said, that he says nothing unless the Father tells him to say it, that I, my desire is to do the same thing. That Father, that I won't speak anything out of turn, out of line, but I speak only that which you desire for me to speak so that it'll be a blessing to the lives of the people. Thank you that every ear is anointed to hear, every heart open, ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save our souls. And we covet the gifts of the spirit to be in operation and demonstration at all times in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to get into this tonight. I want you to turn to the book of Psalms, the uh, book of Psalms. We're going to go to the first Psalm, uh, Psalm 1, Psalm 1. We're going to, um, I, I had the opportunity, I was just, this morning I was in just some devotion time with God. And as I was praying and as I opened up the word and just began uh, to study, I was led actually to this scripture. And as I began to look through it, I believe the spirit of God was speaking some things to me and it was blessing my life. So I'm like, you know what? This thing is a blessing to me, man. I'm going to release it to the people. Uh, so that's what I want to do tonight. And it starts here. It says in verse one, Psalm one, verse one, it says, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So tonight, what we're going to do is we're going to begin to unpack this some. We're going to go through this and, and the importance, these three scriptures, that's, this is my text for tonight. And so we're going to go through it and we're going to see what the spirit of God begins to speak to us, even out of this scripture, as we begin to go through. He says, number one, um, he says, blessed is the man that does not walk in counsel from ungodly people. That word blessed means empowered to prosper or have success. So now succeed. He says the first thing he says, don't walk in ungodly counsel or the counsel of the ungodly for those that speak ungodly things that will try to lead you in ungodly ways or even ungodly people who may try to speak to you practical truths. But now because of the motives of their heart, it comes across the wrong way sometimes. And so you got to be mindful. Yes, it's OK. It's great to have success. But at what cost? How are you supposed to go about doing? There are some who live ungodly lives that do anything to get ahead in life. He says, I don't want you to walk in that level of counsel, that type of counsel. Um, in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. Even God says that in, in the book of Proverbs. But here he's saying, don't follow ungodly counsel. Now, he says, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is is in the law of the Lord. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in that law does he meditate day and night. Now this word delight, it means to be greatly pleased. It means to be captivated by it. Um, you, you're so wrapped up in the word. It's, it's such a delight to you. The word should be a delight to you. And this is what God is telling us. His word should be a delight to us. His law should be a delight to us. When I talk about the law, I'm talking about the principles of the word of God that he wants us to walk in. So he says, don't walk in ungodly counsel. Make sure that my word, this is what he's saying. Make sure that my word is preeminent in first place. He says this, your delight should be in it. You should so be so captivated by the word of God that now it's all you feed off of. It's, it's your primary source of feeding. Let me say that. Your primary source of feeding. And so now anything that contradicts God's word, 
you need to know how to now discard certain things because this law of the Lord shall now, I'm going to deposit it in my heart by meditating on it day and night. In other words, consistency, constancy in, in this thing. And so now to meditate means to mutter. It means to ponder it. It means to roll it over in your head. It, it, it comes to, it's just like if you if you lost something, you've ever like misplaced your keys or something and you're looking for it, it's like, like where did I put my keys? I know I put them somewhere. Man, where, where are they? So, because you you have concentrated focus on trying to locate the keys. So it's the same thing. It's like greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Greater is he. Okay, the greater one abides in me. Greater, larger, um, stronger, a wiser, bigger, better is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So now I can't be defeated because the God in me is bigger than Satan who's trying to attack me and come against me. So now me just thinking about that, me thinking about, okay, the principles of the word of God, give and it shall be given unto me again. Love even those that don't love me back. Do good to those that speak all manner of evil against me, to bless people that even curse me, to do good, to now go forth and to teach people who they are in Christ and to baptize people in the name of the Father. Son. So as I'm meditating on these things, I become consumed by them. And now I begin to walk in them because right, believe, right thinking equals right believing and right believing equals right living. I want you to write that down. Right thinking equals right believing, right believing equals right living. So now he says, now this, this is the part. Now this is the part I'm getting ready to get into real quick. And he says this, now this person who number one does not stand in ungodly counsel, meditates on the word day and night, has a, has a hunger for the word. And it says, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. A tree that's planted, a tree that's planted grows roots. I had a conversation the other night with some individuals and we were talking about that being rooted and grounded. Even the scripture talks about, I think in Ephesians, it talks about being rooted and grounded in love. When you are rooted, planted, grounded, the roots grow into the ground. It's hard to pluck up something that's rooted, that's planted, that's grounded. And so when you are grounded in the word, grounded in the ways that God says to do things, when you're grounded in the kingdom of God system, it is so a part of you. It is hard for people to get you off of what God tells you to do. So this takes time. This takes time for you to grow. You got to develop, develop your faith, develop your understanding, grow in the things of God, listening to the word of God, studying to show yourself approved, getting to a place where you're, you're, you're training yourself, systematic obedience to the word of God, where you enforced obedience, where I'm obeying this word, I'm gonna do this word, whether I feel like it or whether I don't feel like it, this is gonna help me get planted. I've been in ministry for over 20 something years now. And it, it amazes me sometimes, the number of people who are, un, who are uprooted, who have no real strong roots in the word of God and the things of God, how easily people get off straight and off course. Now, I'm not talking about people who just knew believers. I'm talking about people who've been around church. So this, this ain't about you being around church. Because see, there are plenty of people who are in church but not rooted and planted. Because now they don't take the word home and get it in them. And listen, I know what that's like. I know that feeling when you're not rooted and planted, you, it's easy for you to get plucked up off of something because you can be rooted in one area of your life and then not rooted in another area of your life. And so God says, I want you planted. He says, by the tree, planted by the rivers of water so that water will begin to feed the roots of that tree, which causes that tree to blossom and to flourish. So the closer the tree is even to the water, the more exposure the tree has to the water and the roots of that tree has to the water, which the Bible is referred to as the washing of the water of the word of God. The word of God is even referring to the water of God cleansing. As that water comes in you, that word gets in you. It flushes out old natures, old things, old habits. It renews the mind. It gets you into a place. Now watch this. He says that individual, he says, you'll be like a tree that's planted by the rivers of water. Watch this, that bringeth forth fruit in his season, that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf shall not wither 
and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So you're not going to wither. Now, I, I got I to gotta hit this thing here where it comes to this season situation. He says this, this person who does not walk in ungodly counsel, he's blessed. This person who delights themselves in the law of the Lord, that they are assistant, they are, they are solid, they are disciplined in their faith, they are growing, they're developing. Watch this. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water and that bringeth forth, that brings forth fruit. You're supposed to bring forth fruit. We're supposed to bring forth fruit, but watch this in his season. Now, here we go. We're going to plant here for a second. There are certain seasons. Now, this is the thing. You got to, because as I begin to meditate on this, when I looked at fruit and I looked at season, and I thought about just in the natural, there are certain seasons that certain fruit, uh, it, it bears fruit in certain, there, there are certain fruit that bears in certain seasons. And so, you know, when the summer comes, certain fruit, fruits blossom in that season. And you know, when that season, when summer is over, that season of that fruit is over. And this is the interesting thing that like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a strawberry connoisseur. I love strawberries. And there's nothing like having strawberries when it's strawberry season, when it's that time and that harvest. But when you get out of harvest, but, don't, but watch this. Don't we have strawberries in stores year round? You see it all the time. But one thing I noticed about it, that the strawberries that come out in off season don't look like the strawberries that come out in due season and in the, in the proper season. And sometimes even in this world, even in the food industry, there's genetically altered fruit, animals, things of that nature. And this is where sometimes a lot of diseases come from because of altered things that come out of season that people are now creating out of season to supply something. And doing something out of season can sometimes be a very dangerous thing because now watch this. You can try something, you can try to do something, but if it's not the right season, then you're forcing something that is not organic, it's not natural. God doesn't want it to happen. And sometimes people are going to try to force a season that has not arrived yet. And so what God is saying now, this is the other thing. And as I begin to think about it, I said, man, this is good. It's, got, it's like, God, you don't want to bear anything out of season. Just like we have four seasons here. Some places, the seasons are different than others. But here we have four seasons. We got winter, spring, summer, fall. And so there are certain things that you do in certain seasons, even in the stores, in the groceries, in like retail stores, there are clothes you can begin to tell in any store. You can begin to tell the season that's coming up based off of the displays that you see in the store, whether it's the clothes, whether it's candy and you know either uh, Halloween is coming up or even Christmas or even um, Easter or whatever, and you see certain things, you can tell when there's a season that's coming up, you can tell when the fall is getting ready to hit because they bring out long sleeve shirts, pants, things of that nature. When summer's getting ready to hit, they have your shirts and your T-shirts and your shorts and things of that nature, beach items, things of that. So you can always tell by what's displayed, what season it is. And so God is saying, you got to know the seasons. And so sometimes what can happen is you need to catch certain things when there's certain seasons because things come out in abundance in that season. And so God is like, wait a minute. And I was like, and as I begin to see this, I begin to stop and say, wait a minute. Wait a minute, God, what are you showing me here? What are you telling me? Because he says to everything, there is a season. And so there are certain seasons where you're supposed to bear fruit when it's your time. And so sometimes if I don't want you, and this is bottom line, this is what it's coming down to. God does not want you to miss your season. He does not want you to miss your window of opportunity because when it's your season, can't nobody stop you from bearing fruit. Can't nobody stop you from manifesting what God has created you to do. And God is saying you, that individual, you being rooted, you being planted, you being in his face and now hearing the voice of God, that when God says strike, it's time to strike. When, excuse me, when God says move, it's time to move. And so when you get that inkling on the inside, listen, some of that is God is letting you know, listen, honey, it's your season. Baby, it's your season to launch that business. It's your season. And when that season shows up, 
Every provision that you need is going to be there. The ground will be, it will be conducive for you to produce what God created you to produce. And what the spirit of God is saying now, it is your season. It is your time. Listen, there's something about when you catch a season at the right time. It seemed like everything worked for you. You put out everything. Watch this. He says, he, watch this. His leaf shall not wither. You are not going to dry up. This is your productivity year. This is your productive season. I don't care what is happening in the earth now. You need to understand this is a season to strike like never before. This is a season to launch. In some cases, for some of you, there is a level playing field now. There is level ground because everybody is flowing from the same source. And so you got to say, it's my time to strike now. God, what do you want me to do now? And watch this. It'll be a shameful thing for you to try to do something out of season and out of pocket when this season um, is for you to do something else. Also begin to think like this. This other, um, I, I read this book one time and it talked about catching a wave. And, and, and it talked about surfers catching waves. And one thing about a surfer, a surfer can't create the wave, but it wait, this person waits for the wave to show up and they ride the wave. And so you got to know that when it's that time and that season and God sends a wave in the earth and he begins to release a wave of favor, it's your time to catch that wave and learn how to ride that wave. A skilled surfer knows how to ride that wave in that season and in that time when that, when that wave is coming in. And God is saying this, you got to know how to catch the season. Some of you are trying to create the season, but God says you need to. And so my first thought was, God, we need to pray even to recognize the season. Because when you recognize the season, you know what article of clothing you need to wear. You know what you need to prepare for. That when you know winter is coming, you prepare things to get ready for that cold weather that's coming up. You buy your coats. You begin to buy different clothing. You begin to begin to plan different different for different seasons. And God is saying the same way. When you recognize the season, you need to prepare for the season that's at hand. You need to prepare for now, but also for that which is to come. So you got to hear from God and hear from heaven and to say, okay, God, what season am I in right now? What season am I supposed to do? Where is my productivity level supposed to be at? Because everybody's seasons may be different. You may have one point in your life where you got young children. Another person may have be at a point in their life where they're empty nesters. There may be different seasons for them. One person fresh in their 20s, early 20s. Another person in their 50s, 60s, or 70s. It's a different season of life. And so at different seasons, God may require you to do different things. And so what I'm encouraging you to do is begin to pray. God, show me the season that I'm in. Am I in my gathering time? Am I in my, or am, am I in my harvesting season? What is the season that I'm in? Because if I know the season that I'm in, I know, I know the things that I may need to do. I can plan accordingly if I just know the season that I'm in. If I know what I'm supposed to be doing at this time, if this is harvest time or this is sowing time, then I know this. I'm not going to spend much. I'm going to sow more. If this is the time I'm supposed to now acquire more, it's time for me to spend. It's time for me to sow more into my business, get new equipment for the season that's a hand ahead. Because see, God will start telling you to buy stuff, do stuff, invest stuff, take classes here, go do this there. Why? Because he's preparing you for the season that's about to hit. And you're about to turn the table. God is turning the table in your life and you are now turning that corner into your new season with a new season. Sometimes a new season comes with new revelation fresh insight into things, that the thing that you were once in, that you were in your drought. And God said, I'm bringing you out of drought into a place of flourishing now. And you need to begin to say, God, I believe it. I pre I'm preparing for it. Whatever classes I got to take, whatever insight I need to have, whatever things I need to grow in, whatever structure that I need to have, this is my season. This is my time. Now watch this in the book of Proverbs 14 and 12, the book of Proverbs 14 and 12, and then Proverbs 16 and 25, it says it like this. There is a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it are the ways of death. There's a way that seems right to you at that moment, 
But if you don't get God's wisdom, if you don't get his insight in this time, you'll miss his season for you. And the to see, this is where God's mercy kicks in and his grace kicks in because God loves you so much. He'll help bump you into your season and he'll close doors that you've been crying about that he closed, not realizing it was going to take you off course and take you out of the season he's trying to get you to and the place he's trying to get you to. So don't cry over spilled milk. Don't cry over doors that close. Don't cry over the, the job that you lost. Don't cry over the job you just didn't get when you went to the interview and you thought that you crushed it. And then all of a sudden, they didn't even call you back. And you trying to figure out, God, why? God, why? Why is this not happening? Why is that not happening? Or why is this thing happening? God is saying, I have prepared you and I'm bringing you into your season. And you need to now know what it is he's saying to you to do. So this is going to be important, folks. If you got to get this tonight. We are in a dispensation of God's grace, his mercy and his favor. And we, and, and now this is the interesting thing. This is the other thing I begin to see. There are certain things, no matter what season that you're in, or no matter what season it is, you're going to need. There are articles of clothing that no matter what season it is, whether it's undergarments, um, whether it's t-shirts or clothes, whatever it is, shoes, but it may be a different type of shoe, but there are certain shoes you can wear all season round. There are certain things that you are going to acquire that you're going to need no matter what season. Food you're going to need no matter what season that you're in. So there are certain things. Why do I say that? Because as the Spirit of God was dealing with me about it, the first thing I began to think about was the, the Spirit of God talking to me about now training people in the fundamental principles of the Word of God because no matter what level they get to, there are certain things they're going to know how to function by. They got to understand where salvation is concerned because every believer needs to know how to lead somebody to Christ because we're all ministers of reconciliation. Every person should be able to get somebody filled with the Holy Ghost, with the ability to speak with other tongues. Every person should be able to teach somebody how to live and walk by faith and just give explanation of how God did it with them and following the simple principles of the word of God. So no matter what season you're in, you're going to have to walk by faith because the kingdom of God functions by faith. You're going to have to walk in the law of love. You're going to have to now have the right motivation to everything that you're doing. You're going to have to develop the fruit of the spirit. So no matter where you in, no matter what you in, there's certain things you're going to have to know how to do. And so God is saying you need to go back and to now check your foundation. Do you really know why you're doing what you're doing? Have you gotten off course? Have you left your first love? Are you saying, God, why am I here? I'm doing this stuff, but I'm not being fulfilled. God saying, go back and check. Check and see where did you get off? What happened along the way? Because he wants now to get certain things back in play and back in place so he can begin to elevate you because God will not violate his word. Watch this. God will not violate his written word with a prophetic word because the spirit and the word agree. Even though God told you great things are ahead and the prophecy came forth and the, pro and the prophet of God and the prophetess came and said, thus saith the Lord, da 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 Those things are great. But if you violate the word of God, now you will now disrupt your season from manifesting and taking place. You still have to be faithful over little to be ruler over much. You still have to be disciplined. You still have to discipline your flesh. You still have to discipline your mind. You still have to discipline and be a good steward over the resources because now you can now you can move yourself out of your season but by being irresponsible. God planted you there. God gave you his grace, his anointing, his favor, but you squandered it because you didn't learn his practical principles of how to manage the resources that he gave you. So it's important to begin to understand how do I function as a CEO? You know, everybody talking about being a boss, but do you know the cost it is to be a boss? Do you know the cost that it takes to run your own business? Do you know the cost that it takes to run your own ministry? Do you know the cost? The Bible says no king um, doesn't, a king doesn't go into war unless he first sits down and counts the cost. Does he have sufficient enough? If a person building a house will sit down first and say, do I have enough to finish this? Because if they don't have enough to finish it, those that walk by will mock at them 
saying they started this thing, but they couldn't finish it. And God wants you to finish strong. And he's saying, go back. Make sure, dot all your I's, cross all your T's, get those things in place. Go back if you didn't do the business structure right. Go back and redo it. Go back and get the new board of directors and trustees if you need to. Go back and redo the, the vision plan for your, for your ministry, for your business, for your life. Go back and make sure you got the right team. And one of the things you have to do, if you got the wrong person on your team, just repent and remove them and put the right person there. Listen, you have to be wise in this season, saints. You have to know what the Spirit of God is telling you to do. Don't be so quick to move. Understand, God, what is the season? What's the wave that you're sending? How do I need to now maximize this moment that I'm in now? Help me to maximize it. Grant me, grant me wisdom. Show me what to do, how to do it. Show me how to structure it. I'm telling you, folks, if you obey, if you obey the word of the Lord, if you obey the word of God, you will begin to see you will be like a tree that's planted. You're flourishing. And I like this. Your leaf shall not wither and whatsoever you do will prosper. You can't help but to prosper. I believe that this is a time of great ease and things manifesting like never before. That if you will just begin to move forward in things, that doors will begin to open. It's like this. The Spirit of God spoke this several months ago. It might have been all close to a year ago. That it's going to be like the automated doors. When you come close to it, it opens up. That when, uh, uh, But until you get into the vicinity of that door, it won't open up. So you can't let fear stop you. You got to begin to move forward to get near the door. When you get near certain doors, they're going to start opening up for you. Some doors you got to open up. Some doors will open up for you. So, But you got to discern and, and decipher the times. This is why it's very important to understand the voice of God, how he speaks to you. Things, the primary way he speaks to us is through his word, but also speaking to us by his spirit to our born again human spirit. It's, it's the inward witness, the inward witness, that inward prompting, that inward knowing, because now you are born of the spirit of God. You have God's nature abiding in you, and it's a safe guide. It's that feeling that you get that scratchy feeling like, you know what? Don't go this way. Don't trust this person. I know they're smiling in your face, but and they're talking good, but something on the inside of you just doesn't bear witness with it. That means pump your brakes, hold up. Don't be too quick to move forward. Don't be so quick to tell everybody your vision, everything that he's told you to do. Some of you, some of you business people, you need to create non-disclosure agreements before you start telling anybody anything to protect the seed of the vision that God has placed in you. You got to know how to do business well. You got to be sharp. You just can't be prophetic. But for, I mean, I'm telling you, you must be uh, what's the word? You must be sharp. You must learn business well. Use for some of you, you need to learn the language of the rooms you're about to enter into. That's a word right there. You need to learn the language of the room that you're about to enter into. Because now you don't want to see, and I'm telling you this, you're going to have to know how to navigate different rooms in different seasons of your life. And you're going to have to push through the inferiority complex in order to get to certain places that you need to be in and to be involved in certain conversations you need to be involved in. You'll never win. You'll never get a job if you never show up for the interview. You dress with favor, but never show up for the favor to produce. And God is saying, you done done all this praying, all this giving, all this declaring and decreeing, all this fasting. But he says, whatsoever he doeth, shall prosper. You have to be a doer, not just a hearer. So it's time to do. It's time to do. It's time to do. Now, now I'm going to assist this kicking in a little bit. He says, write the vision for your life and make it plain. That's what a business plan is. It's a vision for your business. Where do you want it to go? Where do you want it to grow? Write it, make it plain, set goals, set goals and timelines in some cases. Something is God's timing. No matter how much you push, prod, and do it, some things don't jump off until God just says it's time to jump it off. But there are things you can do to prepare for when your season arise, arrives. 
There are things you can begin to pre prepare. You can begin to learn in this season, in this quiet, isolated time. You should be gathering up. You should have been gathering information like crazy. Some of you could have been saving money more than you ever did before because you weren't driving as much. But then you start spending it in other places. There should be more that you should see. There should be fruit <clears throat> that you see from wise decisions that you make. I'm telling you now, this is a time for you to make wise choices and decisions. But God says, I'm the God of seasons. Glory to God. I remember this, and, I, and I'll speak it again. I speak it again because it's coming up in me now to speak it again. He said, I am the God of seasons. I created the seasons, and I can tell I can tell it when to come, and I can tell it when to stop. And he said, if you missed your season, I'm the God who can tell that season to come back around again. So I need you to go ahead and believe that right now, that some of you felt like you missed your turn, but he's going to bring it around a second time. But this time, you need to be ready to roll. You need to be ready to move. You need to be, and I hear this, I hear this. <laughs> I hear somebody telling someone, somebody's coming and offering somebody something, a job or a contract. In your head, you'll think that you can't handle it. But when you open your mouth, you're going to tell them, I can do it. And when you tell them you can do it, you'll go back and be like, well, what in the world did I just say? What it is, is God led you to put yourself out there and now he's going to bring the support to help you get the job done because he's pushing you into your new season. He's pushing you into the place that he wants you to go into. And so when he pushes you, he's going to help expand your capacity to receive more and to receive greater. This is going to be a season of partnerships for many of you. Whereas because you can't hire employees, you're going to subcontract. Some of you so busy trying to do everything by yourself, it never even occurred to you that you could subcontract some of the work out to other people. You get paid from your client and you pay them to do the work and you just keep the overhead. You charge $100, pay them $50 to do it, and you just kept $50. But you didn't have to do the work. You just oversee it to make sure the work is done. And that's your team right there. You got to think beyond where you currently are. Think bigger. That's what Jesus did. Jesus got help. He recruited help before he launched into his global ministry. He found a team. He says, come on with me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. There was a vision he presented to them. There was something he showed them and demonstrated. And then all of a sudden, watch this. This is the biggest institution. Listen, the CEO of the company died, went to heaven, and the company still grew. People still getting born again. That's a residual effect of a structure that was put in place by the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that even in his departure, it is still growing. Because the vision was laid out. He says, go into all the earth. And so to this day, he left us a manual. He left us instruction. Listen, that, that's, that's the wisdom of God. That, that's a business mindset. Some of y'all thinking, yeah, this is for whoever want to hear this. I, I, man, it's flowing now. When I get into this area, it just get to rolling. There's some people in ministry that you're not thinking about it as a business structure. The minute you switch and take off the pastoral hat and put on the CEO hat, you'll think about things differently. Or you just take off the missionary hat. You have an evangelistic ministry. And you now start thinking about it. Think about it even from a business perspective and business principles. It'll begin to change even some of the systems and things you put in place. And it will expedite and grow your ministry. God will give you simple formulas, simple principles that will cause you to grow. Who is it? Jethro told Moses, tell the people, sit down. He says, I want you to now begin to release, appoint people, appoint elders, appoint people who can help you over the matters. The big matters, they bring them to you. The small matters, they can handle them themselves. Go ahead and delegate authority to people around you. You can't be afraid to delegate. Release it and let them grow. Watch what happens. Jesus told the disciples, he said, all these people, 5,000, not including women in church, he said, sit them down in groups of 50. And I want y'all to begin to now go ahead and begin to serve them. He began to organize and organize blessing. 
Some of you, the structure, as the structure comes, the blessing will be released upon it. The wind of God, the hand of God will become upon it. The hand of God will be upon you to create the structure. And then the wind of God, the breath of God, the life of God will come into the structure and cause it to explode. Some of you get ready to go, your business getting ready to grow now like never before. Get ready. Get ready. You, be, I, you better receive it. If I, listen, if an I was you, <laughs> That's right. I said it like that. If an I was you, I'd receive it. I'm receiving this. This ain't coming out of my head. This coming out of my spirit right now. The spirit of God. See, all of this ain't in the notes. But all I knew was he said it's the season. Recognize the season. Recognize the season that, that you're in. To everything, there's a season. There's a window. There is a Kairos moment. There is a window of time, a sliver of time that God is now giving you to complete what he called you to do. And it's time to get it done. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. I'm going to pray over you now. I want to pray for you and with you. That the grace and the peace of God, just go ahead and lift up your hands wherever you are, stretch it towards the screen, your phone, your TV, wherever you're looking at on your device. I declare and decree that the favor and the power of God will rest upon you and your household. Now, now, let me stop here. Strife is a blessing blocker. It can mess up some things. Unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. Release it. It's time to let go of some things. Let it go. Go ahead and forgive them. Some people are mad with folk that's dead. <laughs> they can never make it right with you, so you got to let it go. You got to let it go. I know your mother or father didn't maybe do the best that, you know, they did the best that they could, and maybe they didn't train you, do right, whatever the case is. And, and I know it hurts. I know you, I'm not uh, belittling the pain, the things that come, but you got to let it go. That you got to let some things go. How can two walk together except they be agreed? Spouses got to let things go. Loved ones, their brothers and sisters, that they haven't spoken to each other in a while. Let it go. Ex-spouses, exes, you got to let it go. Baby mamas, fathers, you got to let it go. And I know sometimes you see things around you that remind you of the hurt and the pain. You got to deal with it. Because some people are mad at God and it's hindering your faith. Because without faith, it's impossible to please him. Because they that come to God must believe that he is and that he's a reward of them that diligently seek him. You got to let it go. I know they did some, some trifling stuff. You got to let it go. You got to fight that memory. When it tries to rise up to remind you how they left you, they left you like they left you homeless, went on about their life like nothing was wrong, and you're still there with the child by yourself, you got to let it go. Because God wants to show you that he can take care of you. You got to let it go. I don't know who that's for right now, but please let it go. Because on the other side of you releasing it, it's going to be an increase of increased blessing, promotion, prosperity, success, but first of all, healing. Let it go. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you right now for healing in the lives of people, healing in their memories, from past failures to even past successes, where they are stuck in an antiquated and old model, whereas you're trying to bring them into the fresh, into the new. Thank you for creativity, ideas, witty inventions, and concepts. The sensitivity to know the season that they're in and the structure and the system that they're supposed to walk and function in now. Show them, Father. Bring them across the people, the right people, that they be in the right places at the right times, meeting the right people, making the right connections, getting things accomplished and done. That whatsoever they do will prosper. I pray for a fire and a passion to be ignited like never before. Thank you for growth and increase. We give you glory. We give you praise for it and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, glory be to God.
Glory to God. Glory to God. I declare in Jesus' name that all is well with you now. Amen. Love you guys so much. I always want to take an opportunity. If there's somebody out there who has never made Jesus the Lord of their lives, if you were to die today, you wouldn't know. You're not absolutely positive. You don't even know. It's like, man, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't even know if I'm going to make it to heaven. Listen, there's a no-so salvation. And I'm not talking about, see, this is one of the things. I'm not talking about you made the confession of your faith. Some of you have walked that out and said, I confess Jesus is Lord. And some of you, you're born again truly, but Satan has been playing with your mind, questioning your salvation. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. But what the heart man believes unto righteousness, what the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You believe in your heart. To believe with the heart is to perceive and receive as real fact was not revealed to your physical senses. You believe that Jesus is Christ, even though you can't see him, you believe. Blessed are those that believe and have not seen. So you got to trust and say, you know what? No, the Bible declares that if I confess with my mouth, if I believe in my heart, confess with my mouth that Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God, that if he died for my sins and that the father, father God raised him from the dead for my sin. Listen, for my justification and righteousness, I'm born again. You've got to believe that and you got to rest in that. It's not, listen, in Ephesians 2, 8, it says, for by grace are we saved through faith, not of works, least any man should boast. Or it's the gift of God. And yeah, for by grace are we saved uh, through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works, least any man should boast. You can't boast in this. You can't say your works did it. Your works don't get you saved. You doing good things does not make you right with God or the righteousness of God in right standing with him. Faith in Jesus makes you right with God. Amen. See, when you confess with your mind, believe in your heart, you get born again. You are born of the spirit of God. He gives you a brand new born again spirit. And now you're a citizen of heaven. You're a child of God. And now the Bible declares you're an ambassador for Christ. You're a king and a priest under your God. A new life. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are made new. That's a wonderful life. And now that you're born again, the apostle Paul says you need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So now that you're born again, born into the Bible says you receive the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, our God, our daddy. And so now that we're born into this kingdom, born into this system, we need to learn how this system works, how it functions, how it flows. See, then after that, you can get filled with the Spirit of God. See, the Holy Spirit, he, see, he's a part of that in, in 1 Corinthians 12, 13. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. That's being born of the Spirit, Spirit of God. Being filled with the Spirit of God is a, is, a, is a subsequent experience to salvation. That's being filled, the baptism with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking with, with other tongues. That's something totally different from getting born again. Now, it opens up. It opens you up. It creates the spiritual space for the Holy. When you get born again, it creates the spiritual space for the Holy Spirit to come and abide and live and dwell in you. And you can walk in power. Great power. But I want you to get born again. God wants you to get born again. You say, you know what? Nobody has ever explained it to me like that. I want to get born again. All right, let's go ahead and pray. It's just that simple. Ready? Let's do it. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you're the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you were raised from the dead for me. Come inside my heart now, Lord Jesus. I receive you as my Lord. I make you the Lord of my life. Say, Satan, I no longer belong to you. Jesus is my Lord, and I'll serve only him all the days of my life. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving me your son. I'm saved now. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. You're born again, folks. If that's you and this is the first time you've done it, I want you to contact us. Let somebody know. Let us know, hey, I got born again. I got born again. You can send us some information. You can email us at info at spiritoffire.us, I believe it is. Info at spiritoffire.us. Dot us, U.S., Send us, let us know I got born again on our website. I believe you can hit a connect card. Go to our website at spiritoffire.us, spiritoffire.us. Let us know. Um, you should be able to follow the prompts and say, listen, connect, fill out the information um, card form and say, listen, I, I want to get more information on how to live this life. I just got born again and I want to grow in the things of God. We're here to help you. This is what we're this is what we're called to do, and I'm excited about it. I don't know if somebody was listening right now that's got born again, or they're gonna listen to this a, a day from now, a week from now, two weeks from now, two years from now. But I believe something happened. I, I sense it in my spirit. Something took place. This was different. You can just sense when God doing something a little different than He does on it, like on the regular, like your normal agenda and flow. Something I believe happened. Glory to God. Well, at this time, we're just going to open it up for anybody. Um, if you desire to sow, if you de um, desire to give. Um, sowing information, they just told me, will be in the comments below. Sowing information. It it's okay. We got we got, we got got our media folk on the job working it. We thank God for them. Um, your giving information is going to come up uh, in the comments below. And um, however you want to give, give by text. You can give through Cash App. Uh, you can go to our website and uh, you can click on the give button donations um, and go ahead and show that way. And listen, this is, I believe is good ground. You all are giving us and allowing us to do what we're doing for the kingdom of God. Uh, we're in the process of getting ready to enhance um, even our equipment for better quality of service for you uh, to do things. And, and listen, Oh, man, I'm just so excited about just being a blessing to people. I love giving. I like to find opportunities to give and to sow. And when you sow, man, it's nothing like, oh, we've been there. When we help prevent misfortune in people's lives or things weren't going well and we showed up with groceries or um, doing things with toys for tots with children at Christmas and giving out food to people. Man, I'm telling you, it's nothing like it. It's nothing like it. There's nothing like meeting their needs spiritually and getting them born again and then also meeting their needs physically and being a blessing to them to help them through a situation. We know what it was like, man. I'm telling you, we know what it's like. We, My wife and I, our family, we've been through some things. And I'm telling you, I think that's, that's what even increased the level of compassion. My wife has always been an outreach person, a giver. I've always been a giver, but it's just when you go through things and you know what it feels like, to lose a house, to lose a car, to have lights cut off, to not have enough money to feed your family. Listen, I know what it's like. I know the feeling. And I thank God that the season changed. <laughs> Glory to God. And God increased us and he's steadily increasing us. And so we're believing God for your steady increase. God is a good God. And he wants to do you good and make you happy. So whatever he tells you to do, just do it. So give. Listen, that's, that's a part of the worship experience. When you come, come ready to sow and to bring an offering. I'm going to sow, um, I'm going to sow myself. I'm so, listen, I'm constantly sowing into this work. <laughs> you know, people like, whether you see it or not, it ain't about people seeing it. Even when it's talking about giving to the poor, the scripture even talks about don't let the right hand let them know what the left hand is doing. Sometimes people just, I've learned this to help, and I learned this from another minister, but I know what it's like. Sometimes you got to protect people's dignity. Everybody don't need to know all that you're doing. Sometimes people just brag, and it's like, you got your reward because you just wanted to brag and just say you gave. But it's something about taking somebody and loving them when they're going through a hard time. And so you know what? It's just between you and God. God just told me to bless you with this. I don't need to know the whole story. And I just want to sow this into you and to see those tears come down their face and to know that you help prevent misfortune in the lives of people. Man, I'm telling you, there's nothing like it. So whatever the Lord tells you to give, give. 
whatever. Break break that barrier. Sometimes it's time to break the twenty dollar barrier. Go on up to fifty. Go on up to a hundred. Go on up. Man, I remember that time we sold that first. Man, the first what was the first time we sold a thousand dollars. Man, I'm telling you, ooh, it was right before we were leaving for our house. Then all of a sudden, something opened up, and we realized, I didn't even realize I had money sitting somewhere in a pension fund. That was the exact amount we needed to move into our new house, and God opened that door right after we sold the seed. We sold into our church van. The, the van that we, man, we bought this van some years ago, and it was like we were leaving for our first church van. And man, we sold towards it, and we sold a thousand dollars towards that thing. And I'm telling you, God open up. So whatever He tells you to do, do it. Whatever He tells you to do, do it. Whatever He tells you to do, do it. Glory to God. Well, that's it. <laughs> listen, we want to tell you if you want to connect with our ministry, become a member or partner of this ministry. Listen. Click on our, go to our website, spiritify.us, um, spiritify and click the connection card. Let us know, hey, I want to know more information. Hey, I want to become a member. I want to join this work. Everybody needs a pastor. You need people to love on you, to watch over you, to, to, to have a sense of community. This is why God called us Spirit of Fire Fellowship for a reason. It's a group of believers that he wants to bring together to have fellowship, in, fellowship, intimacy with him, but also fellowship with one another to help build lives with the word of God. So that's why we're here. We love community. We love being a blessing to people. We love family. We love doing those things together. We want to enhance that experience. And so we thank God for you con connecting and coming on board with us. Praise God. Well, I declare and decree the word of God over your life. I declare the protection and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. Let it guard your hearts and your minds through and by Christ Jesus. Well, we're here changing the culture, igniting the passion and living the dream. God bless you all and have a great night. Peace.